And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who's guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In The Whistler. Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for The Whistler, rated by Independent Research, the most popular West Coast program in radio history. And now the whistler's strange story The Clever Mr. Farley. Dan Farley removed his top coat glanced out the window of his compartment on the luxury streamliner as it headed west from Chicago. Placed his suitcase on a seat, tossed his briefcase on top of his suitcase. Dan had learned long ago that the safest place to hide valuable objects was in the open, and his briefcase was quite valuable to him. In it, he carried $150,000 in brand new $20 bills, counterfeit $20 bills. But so perfectly executed, even an expert would have trouble in spotting them as bogus. As the train began to speed up, Dan smiled. He was glad to get underway. In his work, he didn't spend too much time in one place. And he'd been in Chicago much longer than he intended. Ticket, please. Come in. Oh, hello, conductor. Uh, here we are. Through to Los Angeles, compartment C. Mm -hmm. Not so many traveling today, huh? Then we'll pick up some more in Kansas City. Oh. Yeah, I guess this does it. <laughs> Hope you enjoy your trip. Thanks, I will. I always do. Yes, you do enjoy your trips across the country, don't you, Dan? After five years of passing and distributing counterfeit money, you've never even been arrested on suspicion tall, handsome, with the assured poise of a banking executive. Everyone accepts you for what you appear to be, just a successful young man. You decide to go to the club car and look over some of the other passengers. Like most bachelors, you never object to meeting a pretty girl. When you enter the club car, you deliberately choose the middle seat of the only three seats remaining vacant. But luck's against you. You're annoyed when a seedy-looking man of about 60 sits down on your left. You quickly pick up a magazine and begin to read. <sighs> Quite a train, huh? Mm-hmm. I don't have occasion to ride very many trains. <laughs> Especially a modern train like this. Uh, going as far as Kansas City? Uh-huh. Traveling on business? Uh, yes, that's right. Salesman? No. Nope. I kind of thought you were. I guess it's none of my business anyway. You know, I can't make up my mind whether to stop over at Kansas City or go on through to Los Angeles. Ever been to Kansas City? Never have, no. I guess it's no different than most cities. I'm not sure I'll even stop over. Come to think of it, though, I might have to. My reservation's only good that far. You think I could get my accommodations on this train extended if I decided to go on through? Uh, the conductor can tell you. Yeah. You going straight through? I haven't decided. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so inquisitive. Care for a drink? Uh, no, thanks, no. I guess I'm boring you, son. Excuse me for being so talkative. 
I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. It's just that this article... Yeah, sure, uh... sure. You want to read. Yeah. But speaking of articles, son, if I was a young fella, I'd be a lot more interested in the little article coming this way than I would be in a magazine. I think you've got something. Yeah. She's going to have to sit down right next to you. Go ahead and get acquainted with her. I'll go get me a drink. Maybe I'll see you later. Okay. Au revoir, Pop. Uh, if you'd rather read that book than talk to me, just tell me. It won't bother you anymore. But if you don't mind a little conversation... Why should I mind? Informal conversations are customary on chains, aren't they? Well, I'm not a customarian, but in my book, when a lady desires solitude, that's what she gets. Cigarette? Not now, thank you. Going all the way through? <laughs> Something funny? Yeah, my question. You know, when that old gentleman standing at the bar over there asked me if I was going straight through, it annoyed me. Now to open a conversation, I ask you the same thing. <laughs> Should I be annoyed, too? Well, not unless I affect you the way he did me. Well, I guess this is the wrong answer, but so far you haven't affected me at all. Yeah, well, I was afraid of that. Well, that's the way life is, huh? Besides, we've got quite a ride in front of us. Maybe 24 hours will make a difference. Maybe. Hmm. Uh, leave your husband in Chicago? No. Or oh, meeting him at the other end, huh? No. Don't tell me you're not married. I won't. I won't tell you that I am, either. In other words, what's it to me, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, uh, do you mind telling me your name? Not particularly. I'm Judith Barnes. Judith. That's a pretty name. Chicagoan? At times. Oh. Woman of mystery, huh? Have to be. I'm a spy. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't asked me who I am. No, I haven't. I'm going to tell you anyway. Name's Dan Foley. I'm a spy, too. <laughs> <laughs> An interesting girl, isn't she, Dan? And as the train moves westward, you become very well acquainted with the charming, attractive Judith Barnes. Yes, the two of you hit it off splendidly. And she seems quite interested in you, too, doesn't she? Later, you have dinner together, chat pleasantly back in the club car. And then suddenly you see the smile vanish from her lips. She becomes tense. You follow her gaze to the end of the car, to the tall, heavy-set man in the brown suit. He turns his eyes away and pretends to read a newspaper. You look back at Judith. Notice her attention is now shifted to the opposite end of the car. To another man sitting there. What's the matter, Judith? Uh, Dan, will you do me a favor? That depends. Well, it's very important. I wouldn't ask sure, you. Sure, sure. What is it? I have a small package with me. It's a very valuable package. Oh? I'll leave it here in this magazine. When I leave, will you pick it up and hold it for me? What's in it? I can't tell you. Well, now, look, if I'm going to play carrier pigeon... I'll explain pigeon. everything later, Dan. I'm in compartment B, car 118. Bring it to me there. Okay. Why don't you get it over with right now while Brown Suit's busy with the newspaper? What? He's the reason for all this, isn't he? He and his pal down at the other end of the car. What? They really have you boxed in here, baby. I... I know I can trust you, Dan. At this point, what else can you do? You've got to trust me, sweetheart. Back to the whistler. When you boarded the train in Chicago, you had only one thought in mind. To get your package of counterfeit $20 bills to your contact in Los Angeles as quickly as possible. But your meeting with Judith Barnes in the club car has altered your plans, hasn't it? As the train speeds on into the night, you wonder what's in the package Judith has placed in your care. Why she's afraid of the two men who stationed themselves at either end of the club car. 
You watch her as she leaves now, walks past the man in the brown suit. He makes no move to follow her. You lean back, light up a cigarette, finish your drink. Then finally you get to your feet, move past him, stroll toward the next car. As you do, you turn around. The man in the brown suit is following you. Quickening your pace, you hurry into the next car. Somehow you've got to shake him off. And then suddenly up ahead, a door to a compartment partially open. You're about to hurry by when you notice the man sitting inside. The gentleman you met earlier that afternoon in the club car. Hello there. Huh? Oh, hello, son. (laughs) Figuring on catching a few winks? Yeah, was figuring on it. Say, how'd you get along with the young lady? Oh, all right. Thought maybe I could buy you a drink, a nightcap. Well, thanks. But... I was pretty rude this afternoon, huh? Oh. I didn't mean to be, really. It's just that, it's just that I had things on my mind. Oh, well, that's all right, son. I talk too much anyway. <laughs> oh no, you don't. I tell you what, let's have lunch tomorrow, and I. Yo, wait a minute. You're stopping over in Kansas City, aren't you? Have to. Reservations on this train are all taken, and the conductor tells me there's a waiting list ahead of me. Yeah, I think you're lucky. They tell me Kansas City's quite a place. I think I'll stop over myself. I thought you said you had reservations through to the coast. Oh, I have, but uh, I'm afraid it's Kansas City just the same. You remember a while back when you asked me if I was a salesman? Yes, I do. I guess I was a little nosy. No, you weren't. No, I was pretty brusque. But I had a reason. You see, my work is, uh, well, sort of confidential. Detective? Well, not exactly. I'm a federal man, work for the government. My name is Farley. Government man, huh? Mm-hmm. Say, I'm Seth Williams from Junction City, Iowa. Certainly pleased to meet you, Mr. Farley. <laughs> I've always wanted to meet a G-man. <laughs> well, I'm not, not a G-man, exactly. I'm with the customs department. Frankly, that's why I'm getting off at Kansas City. Glad to hear that. Then we can still have lunch together. Well, no, not in Kansas City, but uh, we might see each other on the train again if we take the same one out of Kansas City. How long are you figuring on stopping? Just one day. Oh. I figure on taking the same train tomorrow. Well, I had the same idea. I'll make my reservations as soon as we get in. Good, I will too. Something to do with one of your cases, huh? Yeah, that's right. Oh, by the way, do you mind if I step in here and wash my hands? I... I don't know where I picked this up. Probably newsprint. Go right ahead, son. The moment you're out of his sight, you open the package Judith gave you in the club car. Your hand trembles as you pick up the piece of jewelry. A diamond brooch, exquisitely fashioned. Breathtaking, isn't it, Dan? Yes, and you're certain it's worth a fortune. You're certain, too, that Judith stole it. And if you can get it away from her, it'll even the score. You hate to part with the brooch, don't you, Dan? But there's nothing else you can do at the moment with a man in the brown suit and his friend probably searching the train for you. Quickly, you make up your mind. Replace the brooch in the package. Step back into the compartment. You feel confident you can trust Seth Williams of Junction City. Oh, uh, Mr. Williams. Yeah? I wonder if you'd do me a favor. Why, I'd be glad to. I'm interested in finding a certain party on this train. Now, you could help me out and do Uncle Sam a good turn, too. Of course. What is it, son? Well, take this package and hold it for me for a while. Well, sure, but... I'd rather not tell you my reasons just now. Later on, I will. Do you mind? Well, no, I guess not. But why pick on me? (laughs) Want to know the real truth, Mr. Williams? Well, of course. Well, it's because you look like that place you come from, Junction City. (laughs) You know the old saying, you can take the boy out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the boy? Yeah, a lot of truth in it, I guess. Yeah, there is. (laughs) You'd be the last person on a train a smart crook would pick on. Well, you're not very flattering, but you make sense. (laughs) I like you. I'll keep your package for you. Go ahead, look through the car. Thanks, I won't be gone long. You feel better now, Dan. Certain that the brooch is safe with old Mr. Williams. Somehow you feel you can trust him, don't you? As you leave him, step into the corridor. The man in the brown suit is nowhere in sight. You hurry through the cars to compartment B, car 118. Dan. Hello, sweetheart. Dan, please, get away from here quickly. Let him come in, baby, let him come in. 
Well, well. Nice of you to show up, chum. Save us the trouble of coming after you. What? What's this all about? So the two of you are working together, huh? You know, first we thought maybe you were just making a play for the lady here. I'm afraid I don't follow this gentleman. I, uh... Maybe uh, we ought to make it clear to him, Joe. Now, wait a minute. Which one of you has the brooch? Well? Brooch? What are you talking about? We, we don't have it, either one of us. Look, lady, we were hoping we wouldn't have to get rough. I, I tell you, we don't have... to get rough with a lady. But a man's a little different. Maybe after a little treatment, your boyfriend will feel like talking. Don't you think so, Joe? I'm sure he will. Now, just a minute. You boys are mixed up. I, I... don't think so. We'll see, anyway. Come here. He has nothing to do with this. I... I know when I've lost, I'll give you the brooch. You stare at her, bewildered, unable to understand what's happened. You watch Judith open her suitcase, take out the brooch, hand it to the man in the brown suit. You're certain it's the same brooch you handed to Mr. Williams a few minutes ago. Yet here it is. Now you're being smart, sister. Thanks. Yeah, very smart. And we'll be in KC before long. I think you better stay right here in your compartment, lady. Don't make a move. All right. That might be a good idea for you, too, handsome. Oh, you don't have to worry about me. I, I don't know what this is all about, and I don't care. It's none of your business, is that it? That's it. Keep it that way. Come on, Joe. <laughs> You've got a great sense of humor. <laughs> that, <laughs> that brooch <laughs> was just paste. A phony? Yes. I figured something like this might happen, so I had an imitation made, a perfect imitation. Well, then why did you carry the real article with you? Because I was sure they'd search my compartment instead of coming after me. Oh? I recognized the man in the brown suit as Joe Franklin, one of the best-known jewel thieves in the business. That's why I was so worried when he showed up in the club car tonight with his partner. Hmm. So you dumped the real brooch on me and then left hoping they'd tail you to your apartment and grab the phony brooch. <laughs> That's right. Mm. Well, it worked out anyway. Though uh, you did give me a bad moment turning up here the way you did. If they'd searched you... They uh... wouldn't have found a thing. What? I had a hunch they'd frisk me, so I hid it. Where? Uh, in the club car. That was careless. Oh, quit worrying. It's practically locked up. You'd better get it right away. Use your head. Suppose those two guys find out that bauble you gave them's a phony. They're liable to come back. What do you suggest we do, then? Leave it right where it is. Sit tight. If nothing happens, those two guys will get off at Kansas City. Once they're gone, I'll bring you the brooch. How do I know you won't double-cross me, Dan? You don't. But you had to trust me before, remember? All right. We'll play it your way. But there's something you'd better remember, Dan. Yeah? You'd better come through. If you don't, you're going to be awfully sorry. Well, Dan, it was easier than you thought, wasn't it? As you leave Judith's compartment, more than ever convinced she's a thief, you know exactly what you're going to do. When you reach Kansas City, you'll leave the train. Let Judith discover your absence after the train resumes its journey. Then it'll be too late for her to do anything. You can forget you ever saw her. Then another idea hits you. A great idea, isn't it, Dan? Quickly, you return to Mr. Williams' compartment. Are uh, your party all right, son? Yeah, I did. Are you still figuring on leaving Kansas City on tomorrow's edition of the same train? Mm hmm Already wired from the reservations. Good. I'll take the same one. Now, meantime, if you can help me still further... That is, if you will. Well, I guess so. I... Well, I want you to keep that little package for me while you're in Kansas City. You can give it to me when we see each other again in the train tomorrow, huh? How do you know I'll show up? I don't. I just believe in you, Mr. Williams. All right, son. I'll do it. Now everything's set, isn't it, Dan? Even if you run into trouble while you're in Kansas City, no matter what happens, the brooch will be safe with Mr. Williams. You smile as you return to your own compartment. And as you step inside, your eyes fall on your briefcase. And suddenly you know something is wrong. The briefcase has been moved. Tampered with, hasn't it, Dan? You're certain of that. Quickly, you open it. The money's still there. But somehow you have the feeling it's been disturbed. And for the first time in your career, a wave of panic sweeps over you. What? Who is it? Mr. Farley, sir. Oh, oh, yes, Porter. What is it? We'll be arriving in Kansas City another half hour. I want to 
wondered if you wanted to send a wire or something. No thanks, Porter. You stand there, staring down into the briefcase full of counterfeit bills. You can't take any chances, can you, Dan? You have to leave the train at Kansas City. Then the moment it stops, you hurry into the station, put the briefcase into a station locker. Yes, that's the safest place for it now. Put it in a station locker. You'll pick it up at a later date for future use. Then you go on into town and stay out of sight overnight. The following evening, you return to the station, take the train agreed upon, and as it pulls out of Kansas City, you hurry into the club car. Your fears that Mr. Williams might not be there vanish as you enter. There he is. He's come through for you exactly as you expected. Well, hiya, Mr. Williams. Hello, son. Say, I was getting worried about you. Thought you might have missed connections. I never miss connections, Mr. Williams. My little package still safe? Sure. You want it? Might as well. Here it is, safe and sound. Thanks, Mr. Williams. Now I'd like to buy you a drink. Fine. Everything went okay, huh? Everything's great, Mr. Williams. The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Everything worked perfectly, didn't it, Dan? Yes, and as the big streamliner picks up speed, you're more than satisfied, aren't you? You might even give up the counterfeiting racket and go into a legitimate business of your own after you dispose of the brooch. You're sure you'll be able to sell it for at least $50,000 once you reach the coast. And you're not worried about Judith Barnes. The chances are you'll never see her again. And the elderly Mr. Williams came through for you exactly as you were certain he would. Yes, sir, Mr. Williams, you did me quite a favor. Well, I was glad to do it. Would you like to see what you've been holding for me? It's very pretty. Yeah, I would. Okay, I'll show it to you. Come on, we'll go back to my compartment. It's only three cars back. Why, we can stop at my compartment if you'd rather. It's right ahead there. Oh, it suits me. Might stick around and beat your game of cribbage, if you play cribbage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the best cribbage player you ever saw. Come on. Here we are. Hello, Dan. Judith. What do you do? How did you know that... It was easy, Dan. I simply followed you when you left the train. You mean Mr. Williams told you? Mr. Williams told me nothing until a few minutes ago. I asked him to arrange this little meeting. You see, I'm an insurance investigator, Dan. Insurance investigator? But I thought you... You thought I lifted that brooch, didn't you? <laughs> no, Dan, no. I just paid $15,000 for the return of that brooch in Chicago. No questions asked. I wanted to be sure it got back to my company. You were handling it alone? My guard was supposed to come along with me. Something must have happened because he didn't show up. So you picked on me? Yes. The minute I saw you, I knew you were just the type to get it through. But, just to make sure, I trailed you after you got off the train last night. <laughs> what about the boys who got the phony brooch? They're in the hands of the Kansas City police right now. Yeah. Like I said before, you're quite an operator. Catch, baby. I guess you win. Oh, thanks, Dad. Uh-huh. This is it. Well, maybe I'll see you again sometime. I could have you picked up for attempted theft, you know. But I won't. How come? Well, in your own way, you were very helpful. You too, Mr. Williams. Thanks a lot. That's all right, young lady. You must be a darn good detective. My boss thinks so. Bye. She's quite a gal. Isn't she? Nice of her not to take action against you. Yeah. Sorry I had to lie to you, Mr. Williams. Anyway, you sure did your part. Well, I guess I'll have to change plans again, get off at Albuquerque and get back east. I'm afraid not. What? You see, I found something of yours, too, in your compartment yesterday while you were tied up with those jewel thieves. A briefcase full of phony money. The same one you put in that station locker in Kansas City. You... You were the one who... That's right. Solid evidence. You're under arrest. Now, wait a minute. I, I... I was on that train looking for someone yesterday. Didn't know just who. And then you came along. But how could you... Never should have told me that lie about being a federal man, son. 
You see, I know all about federal men. Been a fed myself for 25 years. <laughs>